Greetings, children. It's me, Captain Disillusion. And I'm starting to feel like I'm not getting through to you again. Because, I mean, I thoroughly explain a floating city video a year ago. Now another one comes out, and you ask me to explain it again. I do a rant about the importance of knowing when videos are real, and you request for the hundredth time that I debunk the Apollo moon landings. I present a reasoned series of arguments for why this secret bracelet is not worth your money, and you donate four million dollars to a laser razor Kickstarter. And when Kickstarter shuts it down, you still give them half a million dollars on Indiegogo. It's as if you like hoaxes. You don't care about telling real from fake, do you? You just want in on the game. You'd be happy if I just sat here and taught you how to create a hoax of your own. Is that what you want? A tutorial? Well, I'll give you a tutorial. Hey, what's up? Captain D here for UFOcopilot.biz and welcome back to another very exciting paranormal hoax tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at creating an interdimensional vortex portal in the sky complete with a UFO going into it. Just like this one captured in Geneva in the area of the Large Hadron Collider. All I can say is, wow. Now, in the conspiracy theory community, there's been a lot of concern lately, get it? Concern? About the dangerous clandestine experiments that physicists are conducting with the LHC at CERN. The problem is, to really understand what they're up to, I would have to read all this stuff, or at least listen to credible science communicators like Neil deGrasse Tyson. But it's kind of hard to take them seriously when they get regularly schooled at press conferences by bloggers like Anthony Liversidge, who understands science on my level. Because at the end of the day, who are you going to believe? An internationally monitored, publicly funded organization that's been around for 63 years? Or Science Guardian blog, home of conspiracy theories, HIV AIDS denialism, and the anti-vax movement. I don't know about you, but just from a pure aesthetics standpoint, I gotta go with Science Guardian. Look, the site even has state-of-the-art responsive design. Look at that. All right, let's go and get started. I've got these two clips of footage, and if I drag them into a new comp, we can see that it's an angle of the sky filmed as a time-lapse, and then the same angle at normal speed. Now, the time-lapse is pretty cool, but it's not paranormal enough. So I'm gonna duplicate the clip and reverse it. Let's add a rectangular mask to the top of the sky, feather it a bit, and set the mode to subtract so that now our clouds look like they're moving in a weird circular pattern. All right, I'll pre-compose this and call it Clouds Weird. Now, the actual vortex in this video, which I'm sure is real, was captured by a channel called Section 51. I actually made a video about a different Section 51 UFO sighting in the past, and they tried to have it taken down. But when you do that, you have to provide detailed contact information, and of all the things the guy could have called himself in relation to that video, he chose the term auteur. Auteur. I was a little bit confused at first, but then I realized I can look it up. And it's a French word whose use is at an all-time high right now, and it means author, or an artist behind a creative work. Now, does that mean that all Section 51 videos are in fact creative works and not documentary footage of real phenomena? The answer is, we'll never know for sure. So we should probably keep an open mind. But that email was actually just YouTube telling me, dude, don't even worry about it. You're fine. We're not taking the video down. Section 51 are full of merde. All right, let's create a new square solid and call it Vortex. I'll go ahead and add a fractal noise effect to the solid, bump up the contrast and the complexity a little, and on the first frame of the clip I'll scale the noise up, add a keyframe, and on the last frame scale it down so that over time our noise gradually shrinks. Great, now let's make some room and add a distort twirl effect, which will give us that vortex shape. I'll expand the radius a little, and turn it counterclockwise, because all UFO vortices are counterclockwise. Now already that looks pretty good, except for the center. 
So let's add a liquify effect and use the pinch brush to tap a few times in the middle and make it really pucker up. And now it looks like a proper vortex that could suck up a UFO or more. By the way, if you're wondering about this toolbar I'm using, it's a free plugin from a website called videocopilot.net. Here it is, the FX console. And the site's okay, but I'm a little uncomfortable with how obvious it is that they completely copied our site and our business model. I mean, come on guys, come up with your own thing. I'm willing to let it go on for now, but my legal team tells me this is actionable. All right, let's add a rectangle mask to the vortex, shrink it vertically, F to feather it out a bit, and then we'll stretch it to the width of the comp. I'll change the layer's transfer mode to screen, make it a 3D layer, and then go ahead and rotate it and position it in a way that makes sense in the shot. I'll also animate the scale and the shape of the mask to make it look like it's closing up over time. Now the vortex is still on top of everything, so let's go ahead and duplicate the background layer and add a linear color key effect that'll let us key out the sky like a blue screen. Now let's create the UFO. I'll add a new black solid, make it comp sized, and I'll use another video copilot plugin called Optical Flares. Now this one's pretty good too, it lets you create all kinds of lens flares, and they have many good looking presets, and you can even create your own custom presets. <laughs> What are you looking at, mother... Sorry about that. We'll just keep it simple. Choose this multi-iris element and press OK. I'll bring it to the center, blur it out, change the transfer mode to add, and then animate the scale and position of the layer to make it move from a cloud into the center of the vortex. It might not look like much now, but the right sound effects will make all the difference. I'll add some opacity keyframes to the UFO and the vortex layers to make them fade out at the end. For the second part of our shot, I'll take the non-time-lapse clip and try to animate its position so that it sort of lands in the right spot as it settles down. And that way, we have a seamless transition from a vortex sky to a normal-looking sky. And I know everything looks fake because we still haven't added the secret ingredient. Let's pre-comp everything and add a wiggle expression to the position property to make the layer shake randomly like a handheld camera. We'll copy the expression, paste it into the rotation property, and divide it by 12 to make everything even more shaky, as if the person filming has some sort of a disorder. Now I'll go ahead and add some hand keyframes on the position and the scale properties to make it look like the camera is zooming in and out. Because even in this age of mobile devices, UFO sightings are still traditionally captured on camcorders with zoom controls. And of course, I'll blur everything a bit, then go through and add a whole bunch of keyframes to imitate autofocus fluctuations circa 1985. And finally, let's do some color correction. I'll add a curves adjustment, take down the red a bit, maybe bring up the blue, and then I'll add a tint effect to tone things down, and then I'll add a CC composite effect to fade everything back to how it was, because it looked just fine. So there you have it, a completely true-to-life, interdimensional portal vortex that you can upload to YouTube and get a couple of million views guaranteed. Once again, thank you for watching. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to check out all our other tutorials on the website. We've got things like my buddy Enrique getting blown up by a death ray. <laughs> thank you guys for your support. Happy Valentine's Day from my family to yours. I'm Captain Disillusion, and we will see you next time. Okay, learning is kind of fun. We just have to remember to use our newly acquired powers for good and not stupid. Visual effects shouldn't be wasted on hoaxes. They are, after all, an elevated art form for telling stories and forcing deceased actors to fulfill their contracts posthumously. But now I'm afraid it's time for me to go, kids. An entire branch of a popular country's government has fallen off. Remember, love with your heart, use your head for everything else. Captain Disillusion!